Hello there, welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 55, entitled Azure Cost Factors. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain starts with Describe Azure Pricing, Service Level Agreements and Life Cycles, goes through Describe Planning and Management of Costs, and terminates with two skills, actually. One, Describe Zones for Billing Purposes, and two, Describe the Factors Affecting Costs, such as Resource Types, Services, Locations, and Ingress-Egress Traffic. A lot of vocab words there to deal with. Let's get started. First, what is this mysterious skill, zones for billing purposes? Well, in Microsoft documentation and in their pricing details specifically, they've divided the world into billing zones. So a zone for our purposes is a geographical grouping of Azure regions for billing purposes. And specifically, we're talking about bandwidth. Remember that Microsoft Azure offers GeoScale, this global network of data centers, we're talking about dedicated connectivity, particularly within a region. You've got the concept of the availability zone. You'll also recall earlier in the study guide a little bit about region pairs. Regardless, what you need to know at the end of the proverbial day for your Azure exam is that we're talking primarily about egress data transfer. Those are $5 fancy words. It just means outbound data transfer. The general guidance is that your network bandwidth going into Azure is free, but coming out of Azure through a download or transfer operation, that's considered egress. Upload, transfer to is ingress. Download or transfer from Azure is egress. You're charged for that and probably related to specifically how Microsoft's network bandwidth is laid out. For cost purposes, they feel that this zone model works the best for them. And this egress data transfer is principally in the Azure storage subsystem. You're also talking about related Azure products like VPN. There's the content delivery network or CDN. There's Express Route. In the next slide, which we see right here, I have a map that took me some research to find. You can see the attribution in the lower left that graphically shows the relationship among the different billing zones. It looks like there's one, two, three. I believe there's more than three zones nowadays. This is honestly a confusing subject, and I had an awfully hard time preparing to teach you this particular subject because I'm not going to accuse Microsoft of being cagey, but their documentation on network bandwidth and billing zones is very low and sketchy indeed. You just need for your exam success the top line details, the fact that the earth is divided into these billing zones and each zone has a different price point for egress transfer costs. Other Azure cost factors called out on the Azure Fundamentals exam include reservations. This is where you can realize upwards to a 72% discount over pay-as-you-go prices. This is a one- to three-year flexible term contract that covers a number of Azure products, not only virtual machines. So the idea is if you know you're going to be in Azure for at least one year up to three years and beyond, why not consider prepaying? And you don't have to pay all up front. You can actually spread your spend over the the course of your term. Microsoft is pretty flexible in how they handle this. Another cost factor would be the spot VM. Here's where we're taking advantage of unused compute capacity in the Azure data centers. If you've got a stateless workload, that is, you have compute that you need to crank through work, but the VM can be deallocated any time, and that's okay because you're keeping the state or the data external to the VM, then spot VMs can really make a lot of sense because you can realize Again, a huge discount as to paying the normal pay-as-you-go per minute runtime. But the thing with Spot is that if Microsoft needs that compute power for another paying customer, you can lose your VM very quickly. Azure will just deallocate it and stop it immediately. Lastly, you should be aware that there's definitely regional cost variations for Azure VMs. If you're flexible about where you want to place your VMs, you can see a nice discount that way. Let me illustrate some of these points in the demo. Let's start this demonstration by looking at the bandwidth pricing details page in the azure.com public website. This is where we get the main breakdown in terms of, as you can see, inbound and outbound data transfers. Remember for your exam, inbound data transfer is ingress, outbound data transfer is egress. 
And here's where we start to see references to zones. You don't need to memorize any of the price numbers. You don't need to be able to enumerate how many zones you are. You just need to understand what the zone means, that it deals with billing, in particular, outbound network data transfer billing. So there's zone one, and then they talk about other things. Of course, how do you figure out where the zones are? And as I said, it's awfully cagey to get that detail. It's actually not printed out on this page. I found in the Microsoft Docs, if you look at the Understand Azure Content Delivery Network or CDN billing article, they have a section here called What is a Billing Region? And here they're listing five. A moment ago in the slide, I showed you a graphic I found on an IT professional's website where he listed only three. Again, this is confusing, and I've had my confusion confirmed by talking to other IT professionals. Ugh. Let's close these tabs and forget that subject, <laughs> and let's look at some of the other cost factors that I had mentioned in the slides. Specifically, let's head on over to virtual machines. You can see right at the top toolbar here, we have reservations. You can also get to reservations globally by going to the global search, and starting to type reservations. And I like this blade because when you step down the reservation path by clicking add, we can see at a glance all of the different Azure products that support the reservation model. Again, not only virtual machines, but also Azure Blob Storage, Azure SQL Database, actually quite a few database platforms indeed support this model and it actually scrolls down from here. There's even some more below it. So that's reservations. The spot instance comes in when you're deploying a virtual machine. Let me go to add here and we'll select virtual machine. And I'm just going to put enough in here so that we can get our options. Specifically, I'm going to choose an operating system image. I'll choose a Windows server. And then we have a property called Azure Spot Instance. And if we flip that switch from no to yes, we have two eviction types. Eviction is where Microsoft will decommission your VM. It will evict your machine, which basically means it's going to stop it and deallocate it in order to give that compute power to another customer. And you could just simply say capacity only, where you let Azure evict the virtual machine when Azure needs the capacity for pagey workloads, but you can optionally bid on the maximum amount you're willing to pay per minute, you see? So the price or capacity lights up the maximum price Price you want to pay per hour field and Azure will evict your virtual machine only when the cost of the instance, in other words, what another customer is willing to pay, is greater than your max price. So that's some flexibility. Another element of flexibility is the eviction policy. The default option is where Azure will simply stop or deallocate your VM. You could swing a heavier hammer, and again, if you've got stateless workloads, you may not care about keeping a spot VM up persistently. You can choose to have Azure just go ahead and delete it if the VM needs to be evicted. For learning resources, number one, bandwidth pricing details, timw.info forward slash ZRS1. See if you can make more sense out of it than I tried to. I gave it a valiant effort. <laughs> for Azure reservation data, go to timw.info forward slash ZRS2. And for spot VMs, go to timw.info ZRS3. Another episode down. Next up, we have Azure pricing and total cost of ownership calculators. I look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and or my Twitter feed at Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site courses are at timw.info forward slash PS and my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next episode.